Ray Fader, uh, Fader, who takes the uh, the Venomancer here. Yep. So they're going to run a mid Veno. Yeah, he's been playing that a lot in the past. It's quite a while Prepare since he did, uh, but he has played this hero plenty. Interesting. I wonder if he's going to bypass his uh, his mech build as well, like he did in the previous series. For now, let's get ourselves into it. We welcome in the live stream. Greetings to everyone who is tuning in around the world. As we go into our first game of the two-game series, Cloud9 versus Team Secret here on day two of the group stages of TI5. Yeah, and this game is going to decide between these two at least who's going to pull ahead or if it's going to stay even on the four points that they're both sitting on right now. And uh, I like the lanes that C9 decided to decide uh, to go with here. Fada on the Venomancer is going to do much better against the Razor mid, but we'll see if Secret predict that and actually put the Razor top against the Magnus, because it's going to be an offlane Magnus. Yeah, so if you run your offlane mag, is this when... Okay, so it's, it's offlane mag versus Razor. Very appropriate that S4 has to face his hero. Mm -hmm. um, and then you run Gyrocopter as part of this aggressive way. And he's scouting. Wow. <laughs> he's, he's up a very long way. It's very rarely would you ever see an anti-mage walking almost behind the tier 1 tower of mid of Dire. Well, AM is one of those few heroes that can scout really, really aggressively in the level 1 stage because he has that blink. And he doesn't mind skilling the blink, unlike Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain could have done it as well, but you never want to get begins. forced to skill blink. Well, Fada's going to be really happy with this. Yep. Easy bounty rune at the start. Um, there was a potential for Zad to try and contest it because no one else was there from Cloud9, uh, nice. but he didn't have vision of this. Nice for C9 here. They're actually reading the lanes correctly, and this is going to work out better than the alternative, but AM is still going to end up going up against Zai on his axe on top lane. Yeah. That's all about the, uh, the spin chance. It's not 17%. It's only, <laughs> it's only 20% yeah. for him. Yeah, and, only 20%. Uh, S4, well, Misery is trying to be a bit more of a nuisance to him. He only saw 21 points of damage, and it's uh, Poison Sting was the first thing that Venomance has leveled up. I think you're right about the build. It's all about Plague Wards, Poison Sting. Don't care about Gale, just lane dominance. Yeah, you could also start skilling up your Venomous Gale to max level, but I mean, it deals tremendous damage, but it's not really something that you can do because you turn useless later on, but yep. look for him to skill at least one or two points into it. Yeah, but if he keeps the play wards up in mid, if he gets a higher level on that, Razor can't really deal with this. Ow, oh, wow. Okay, Aww. Sentry Ward on Sentry Ward. They're getting rid of the Radiant one, actually, actually using a Tango yeah. to cut it out. And uh, Puppy and Kuro battling now with Bone 7 and, and No Tower. They skew it down. Two of the heroes, Puppy and Kuro, in range of the T1 tower. Extra damage to Shaz Puppy. Oh, Locked puppy. in here. No heal. He's going to be the first blood. No Tower needs one more hit. Actually, needs two because the heal was there. Arteezy rotating over. Puppy wants to stick with it. That was really, really close. Almost got them there. No Tail and Bone 7 playing well there. But uh, in the end, Puppy is going to live. Looks like uh, Fada did decide to level up the Venomous Gal. He's gone the two points up in the Poison Sting against S4. Yeah. Yeah, that's very normal so far. I expect from here that he will get four points into the uh, Venom Wards from now on. So he has... Oh, bottom lane. They're going again. again. Right under the tower. This time it's Bone 7 who's low. No skewer available. The shards locking in Arteezy with Bone 7. And he'll take the first blood. But will he be able to survive? Kuro deep in un under the tower. The Fate Ball taking away a large portion of the damage here of Dotel. And more TP supports coming in. But Arteezy now with a double kill. Oh, He's still lips. not away. Kuro is running away. There's one range creep chasing him down. And even a buyback coming in from the Tusker, they really want to get oh, Arteezy. He's got him. shards available. He'll lock in Arteezy. No mana. Actually, got four stick charges up his sleeve. So Arteezy does have a little bit more to work with. Is now he five. Live? He's thinking about oh, it. And there's three heroes. They're body blocking him. Still got the stick charges. But the brain tap is there from Bane. Kuro will deny himself up to Roshan as well. Get your rares, boys and girls. That is going to be still a 2 1 on the board in favor of Secret. Yeah, that was really nicely played by Secret as well. They forced so much a buyback there and TP's down to just get that return till on RTZ and he almost lived. That was so close. If the skewer missed, he would have lived 100%. And now Secret change up their lanes. They bring Poppy to the top lane to just support Zai a little bit more. This makes it very scary for Eternal Envy when he gets called, but Axe actually hasn't leveled up call. Yeah. He he's, he's holding a point. Yeah, he could probably have called him there and at least try a heal bomb, but it wouldn't have killed Envy. It would have dealt some damage, maybe. They think about middle lane. Gale's off target from Farter. Uh, he'll still get this, the uh, poison on S4, but because the Gale didn't connect, S4 is trying just to zone out Farter, and Misery showing himself. 
He came underneath the tower in Koro, trying to get in range for the telekinesis. He's just out of range now. He's he in range. It. No plus of field damage. Uh, but with the nightmare, Koro, he shares it. Yeah, she takes the nightmare off him. The shards will keep him away. Yeah, can't do much more than that. Top Envy trying to farm here uh, desperately. He's, he still has blink. the blink, so he's safe. But it's definitely not easy farming Radiant's up here. Poppy is going to do a good attack. job harassing him away. And now TZ's going to start to get more control over this bottom lane. He's 13-3 up against the 9-0 of Bone 7. Yeah. But it's, it's a Gyrocopter with 2 and 2. That's, oh, sorry, 2-0-2, two, two, I should say. Maybe they, could, skill build. maybe they could kill him, actually. They have plenty of damage between the two of them. So if our TZ comes closer. Like snowball into a skewer back. And yeah, exactly. Snowball first. Start with that. Uh, they can actually kill him. in trouble. He's running for the room, but the God has already hit the Gale. And well, you might get a kill down on bottom lane. Arteezy dropping low. The oh, shards the actually pushing him back out of it. It's S4. Nightmares on him. Akura picking up Fada, throwing him back. as a haste rune over on this Rubik. S4 still wants to try and run Denial? out of here. And no, no oh. possible denial. He focused the wards nicely, but it was Misery who gets the kill. And they're still going on bottom lane. No tail under the tower. The rocket barrage damage kills him just in the nick of time. He actually managed to turn that and kill them solo. Wow, that was really nice play by Arteezy. I didn't even keep my eyes on him. I was looking at the mid fight again. That was uh, an unexpected turnaround. But they did kill S4 on the mid lane, so C9 also getting kills. 3 4 2 right now, then, in the favor of Secret. At the same time, though, this axe is getting quick levels and quick farm. Poppy's also being able to do this pull over to the side multiple times. So it's not as much experience to be gained off that top lane. In fact, it looks like they're switching up now. So Fada is moving to the top. They might be worried the secrets start creep skipping. And yeah. the Venom Manager has to defend that. Yeah, a little bit worried about that. And right now I'm just looking at Envy. And he always seems to have this struggle when he's playing Antimage. Just running from lane to lane, kind of farming wherever he can. It's never the free farm AM games, but he always gets the item sooner or later. Just give him that time, that space afterwards. Time and space. But That's secret, all we ask for. I, I highly doubt Secret are gonna, are gonna grant him that. Like, uh, Envy at this point just probably wants to pick up some boots, get get a gauntlet, get yeah. a little bit more life to work with. A little bit. And he's trying to get his ring right now with the Antimage. Trying to cut his way in so he can buy it. He's, yeah, there we go. Close enough to the shop. Well, it's not even buying boots, just having the regeneration instead. <laughs> and yeah. now Envy initiated on. He'll blink himself away, but they're picking oh, out the tree line. Misery they actually there. caught Misery into the Rocket Mirage. Now, he doesn't have mana for a Nightmare. He's got two stick charges, but that still won't bring him close He's enough. He'll run around the tree lines, but Kuro is there for him. And he'll take the kill well, the with a Fable Secure. Though. They're smoking in. They want to snowball in here. It's dangerous to do so. Two stick charges on, on Arteezy, and he's got called down. It's a level six gyro you'll be coming under. Yeah. But still, he doesn't have mana to use all his spells. That's easy. Snowball's coming. He starts the call down. All three will be underneath this one. They skewer him back out of it. And maybe Kuro, he's got Telekinesis and maybe Big Daddy. Yes, the double stun. Throwing it back towards Bone 7 and Eternal Envy. I actually think that uh, Skewerback pulled him away from the two other heroes. So that might have saved him, in fact. I mean, yes, it pulled him closer to the Tier 1 tower, but... His teammates could not do any right clicks. Uh, S4, Nightmare up. Fada's coming in, but there's 70 stolen damage on S4, and he'll just TP out. The damage output, it's not going to be enough. Oh. He got a bottle. Going to regenerate just fine there in the base. Yep. Not enough damage over time yet. When you get the Aghanims, level 16, that kind of stuff, yes, you can do this. Kill people in Fountain. Not yet. Give him some time. But Fada, he's up to level 3 on those Plague Wars. He actually threw out the Nova too. That was the ultimate committal of, of, of Venomancer. Yeah, curious that he did skill into the ultimate there. But he has level 4 wards now. And I guess uh, putting one point into ultimate is pretty fine as he did force out a defensive TP and could have gone and kill if it wasn't for that. Yeah. And he's got early levels anyway. Like the 4 points of him Plague Wars, you want to hit that point. He's level 8. Yeah. So the pressure on mid is, is perfectly alright. Oh yeah. The this pressure is... on bottom lane though is, is really uncontrollable for Cloud9. Yeah, but they're not taking any real damage to a tower yet. They're starting to take some, but Catapult dies and they're pulling the creeps back a lot. They're now first taking some damage under their tower. I'm also watching Zai's timing for that Blink Dagger. Like, we're only 8 minutes roughly in and he's got 1600 gold. Yeah. Also roughly. Yeah, he's really rich. He's gonna have Blink Dagger very quickly. Very, very quickly, so... A lot of farm on the three cores over on the side of Secret, whereas C9 are struggling more with it. I would say the early game here is definitely looking great for Secret, pulling ahead quite steadily.
But he will take this tier one tower. I thought Fido was going to initiate in. He picked up an Invis rune, but then the bounty spawned directly after it. So he burned the Invis rune just to walk down the bottom lane. Envy, here's your mass DPs coming in with the Shards. That's actually blocking anyone. Nice the pull down from Arteezy. Perfect position. The Rocket Mirage hitting Misery. Be saved by the Snowball as they run into Arteezy. Where is the extra damage? The Fable of the Mana Void as well. Arteezy still alive through all of this. Puppy, where's your Shallow Grave? He was actually nightmared up. So he was incapable of letting the Shallow Grave off. And now he'll actually use it to TP himself away to safety. That's a two for one trade off. And S4 coming in and getting two kills there in the back. And now Fala just kind of standing Radiance off with the S4 here. He's got attack. ulti in 15 seconds' time. Yeah, he wants like to if chase he chases them. them with the Nova, uh, he'll have to cut through the tree line. Oh. As he hits the Gale. Yeah, TP out. Yeah. Downside about a Venomancer. No stuns. Yeah, very heads up play there by Fala, but sadly, Kuroki was able to TP away from him. So top lane now, X during all of this has been farming up his entire blink dagger. <laughs> to say it right now, that's German. <laughs> yeah. Top lane jump, there's your blink dagger at bone seven. Culling bladed style Radiant from Zai and Arteezy. Well, the fortification gonna make this easy. He's overstayed his, uh, uh, make it hard, and he's overstayed his welcome. Misery doesn't get in range for the Nightmare, but they're going to deny this Tier 1 tower on top. So that's going to be two Tier 1 towers being denied. Radiance yeah. Tower Very nice value, denied. though, to immediately get a kill with your Blink Dagger. That's the dream right there as an Axe. When you finish your Blink, immediately get some payoff for it. It's a good one as well. Like, you get it over on the Magnus. Yeah. This Mag is a long his... way away from getting something like a Blink Dagger RP off. It's... Exactly. He's delaying his Blink Dagger a lot and still using yours. And meanwhile, we see Arteezy just trying to farm up the Helmet Dominator. As S4 might be in trouble here, but there's no mana on uh, Fada. They're gonna snowball him. It's just trying to test the rune, yeah, and it will it. actually be an illusion rune for him. <laughs> no tail just being a nuisance, and this means that he has to run to base on S4. Gonna help farm the jungle a little bit. These plague wars are such a problem for him. Yeah. Like, like you saw Kuro and Puppy looking to come down to help out S4, but the second they did, they're fairly well slowed up. Yeah, the. Plague Wars are really, really strong, and they're only going to get even worse to go into when they get some more points in Poison Sting, as they do apply Poison Sting, but not full effect. See, the only issue for Fighter is actually having mana right now, because yeah. he's, he's walking around with only 90. Yeah, it's because the rune control has been very good from uh, from everyone else, and Fada did not get the runes. Which means no bottle charges. Yep. TP up onto the top lane, it's going to be Zai. Now, the Radiant don't have any vision of this. Oh, the smoke up. Running down. This is the one where you can get in close enough for it. Bone uh, 7. Husk uh, is there, though. They can see him. And uh, they can, they can both. see both of them. They're, he's fine if he gets a double call. Oh, yeah. He would be very happy with that. The call down would be quick to follow. But Bone 7. Inching forward again. Tuscar. No tells making sure he's not. In fact, he's going to TP himself away. Oh, they're immediately going to go if they see his TP. They don't see it in mid. There's no observer ward looking for it. But, well, they still win anyway. So, Bone 7. Coming blade on top, call down committal. And this is now a second successful kill for the Axe after picking up that blink. Yeah, very nice. And soon he got both these kills top and definitely delaying the economy of Magnus. He did go into the mana boots, but he, he's far away. He's, I he has no gold. I think Puppy's dead. Yeah, Puppy is farming aggressively. He's like, guys, I'm baiting. Don't <laughs> go on me. I have friends. I have team. Oh, there's still stuns. Yeah. There's the nightmare. No, no way to deny himself at all. He knew he was dead. Yeah, there's no way to get out there. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you got to push a lane, even if it's going to get you killed sooner or later. He did get a lot of farm down there before they punished him. Yeah, and he bought space. Oh, Envy, stealing the Invis rune. Uh, but it's buying space for Kuro. Like, this is one of the, the critical supports of, of Secret we have to keep our eyes on. Because not only has he got Arcane Boots and Urn, now he's going to get either Force Staff and Blink Dagger. And Kuro on Rubik is already good. You give him the ability to maneuver during team fights, you got to be really careful. Yeah. And looking at the style of the secret play as well, Kuro is the one who normally goes for the kills, and Puppy is the one who's going to have the higher CS between these two players on the support role. And Secret is one of the teams with the more even balance between the gold on the entire team. Everyone gets something. Dyer's Look at the CS, 28 CS attack. on Dazzle. He's equal with the Bone 7 Magnus. I think it's time to give him power. Kuro stolen power. Yep. So they get a, they get a smoke up. I mean, it's level up. one in power. It's not, it's it's not, not amazing. It's not terrific. But they'll take anything they can get as an advantage. Yeah, would be great to uh, to get the Shockwave. Would Where be is that cobble the going? Spell. They, they accidentally, okay, the Cobalt was doing the pull for him. Doing the Ancient stack. 
Yeah, they're trying to keep track on the Antimage because they know he's still farming. He's just blinking around. He has his Perseverance up now and the Power Threads. Uh, they're going for Fodder in the trees. Is TP <laughs> is TP's available? Yeah, they know he's there because yeah. he keeps spitting new words. And then uh, now Blink's the eye is too late. Oh, Bly should have gone for a blind blink. He had to, but Puppy. not in time. On the other side of the trees with Misery. Oh boy, he's going to try and duke it right now. Well, up and around, but the Plague Ward's going to come in. He might be able to Shallow Grave himself yes. again here with the Weave effect. Yeah. But the rest of his team's too far away. He finds yeah. TP and, and Wards. He knows he's dead. Deja vu. <laughs> Gets caught out again, he graves, and he's like, well, I'm not even going to try my TP this time. It was just coming for an aggressive ward. That's yeah. all. Yep. Well, he got the ward down, but they got that before. I, I'm actually... He was trying to go even deeper and plant one behind the enemy tree line. And they're actually looking for it. They're, they're sentry warding looking for that observer ward. Yeah, so good that he didn't have time to plant it. He knew. As soon as he got spotted, he started running around there, but he would not drop a ward as he's being chased. Way too experienced for that. Uh, Envy doing Envy things. Oh, he knows. He definitely knows. He even leaves the creep on half HP because he knows he's being uh, pursued. Yep. Right. Rest of secret. Uh, I'm actually amazed by the by the way that Envy manages to scramble for farm in these games where he's high pressured. And Venomancer is a very good hero for them to have in their team when there is so much pressure. The uh, Venom Wards are good aggressively, but they're also really great at defending towers. Yeah. Terrific up against a hero like S4, like, like the Razor. He can't clear through these. Even the gyro, until he gets a, like a higher level of damage, oh, he you can't need physical do it. damage. Yeah, you need damage items until you really kill them fast. Yep. And it, it's not until like at least 30, 35 minutes in that you actually kill the Venomords very quickly and easily. Yep. Which means the push power of Seeker is very, very low. The yeah. Gale will connect an S4. So they're trying to man mode down the towers and Zai <laughs> into the blink position, but they see him. That's a radiant observer ward watching Zai walking past the ancients. Yeah, that was a little bit of a tell, the Ice Shards coming out there. Maybe Puppy will get the D-word on that. The early blink. Early blink into almost a level 2 ultimate over on Fata. Interesting to see the blink attack. Venomancer. Sometimes I've uh, seen him play the Shadow Blade. Uh, blink Tiger is going to be very useful in this game, though. If he can get the ulti first before the enemy goes, yep. that would be amazing. Because yeah, then they can e either kite it or just... Well, maybe even avoid the fight completely. Secret would bail out. They're coming up to top lane. There's uh, your blink up. Waiting for the call. And Bone7 just trying to outrun him. Oh, he realizes he is too close. They'll just dunk him down. Bone7 is struggling so hard in this game. He's 0-4-1. And, and he was up to 1,650 gold there. Now dying again. Getting set back once again. This, this is not going to work for him. They need to have this Magnus up. The Venomancer can only do so much to stall up this game. Like yeah. We're talking, okay, when you get damage shielding items, then you can take care of the wards. But right now, Secret are doing a pretty damn good job at that. Arteez is going to get his Yasha, potentially S and Y, up shortly. You're already getting the mech over on Razor. S4 just needs the head rest. He's got the money for the for the full recipe of it. He does. Yeah. So he's, he's looking fantastic for his farm. These item progressions for Secret are not late. No, they're definitely not. Everyone is on time with their farm, and even more so. Like, the axe almost has his four staff. That's going to be huge. So, As you can see it in the graph, oh. it's 5,000 gold advantage for Secret 16 minutes in. Yeah, aggressive blink in there by Fada, just going on uh, S4. Look at how he ran away and lost so much of his HP to this. Is he actually dead? He looks like no, he's dying. He, he's going to live. He has the bottle and he has the magic wand. Poison Sting staying on him. barely, though. That was very close. If Fada got one more auto attack, he would have died. Oh, 50 gold now for the mech over on Razor. Then that kind of combo won't won't be as successful. And that was a level 2 ulti committed as well by Fada. So yeah. it's, it's a heavy committal. Yeah, it is. It is. But he also pushed back. Sometimes, even though you don't get the kill, you force the enemy to run all the way back to base or TPA back to base. It can be, it can be pretty worth it just to do that. And we see a lot of passive farming right now, though. Not a lot of tower pressure. They still have the tier 1 mid, C9, that is. And I think they're pretty happy with the way the game is going, despite the fact that Magnus is dying. That's the one downside for them. Yeah. Envy's still fighting his farm as the Animage. That's that's going to work. And as long as the Magnus can find a couple of levels, he'll still do his job. Yeah. Eventually, he'll pick up a Blink Dagger, but it's the Empower buff up to make AM even stronger. Um, and he's able to give it to him already, so even though you don't have the Battle Fury... It's the poor man's Battle Fury. Yeah, yeah it really is. Shards stolen by Kuro, level 3 on those. So this is the first real tower pressure we've seen from Dyer's Secret. Oh, if Antimage blinks up... No, he doesn't. Radiant Very nice. He was... Fortified. Danger there of the Axe. Axe going on Bane. 
this really going to be enough on the top? Misery attempting to TP out, and they do get the call. So there's no real way to get away. They'll actually kill him off. Meanwhile, in middle lane, it's going to be Notar being brought down by the rest of Secret. AM tried to jump in with a mana void and kill him off, but unsuccessful. Wins all across the board here for Secret as to find pickoffs both pop and mid and get the mid tower as well. This is really huge. And the last hits to the Razor as well, the hero that needs to snowball early on, Radiant's and he is getting the farm. Is under attack. And you can't forget about RTZ as well. He's been farming a lot in this game. Does he have the full Sanji Asha? Yeah, that's the build. There are so many, so many BKB piercers that it's better to just go for Sanji Asha. Speeds up farming a little bit more. And it's still very good for fighting. He's actually going at, at 5.6 gold per minute. Yeah. That's pretty quick. Uh, Zai also, we should probably flag the fact that he's in no man's land with an invis rune behind the towers. Now he'll blink himself away. Yeah, he got away. Uh, they are probably thinking about Roshan sometime soon, but again, we're seeing not the best Roshios. They have the Dazzle heal, which is really amazing, but they could use the Medallion on Dazzle before they go for that. Maybe once they take the Ancient stack and get a Demon Edge over on the Gyro, mm. like, yeah. th then it will be worth it. Very close to the Blink Dagger on Rubik right now, 2,050 gold. So dangerous for his initiation. Heroes like Andy Mage have to be so scared about that. Not to mention, if you do nice actually walking, blink in with Bone 7, you can get picked up and thrown, thrown back before yeah. you can get your RP off. Kuro is that quick. Yeah, he is very, very quick. And RP is an easy spell to steal as well. Sometimes you can even cancel it, as you said. But the smoke from C9, they're not committing, not going for it. So they're backing out to mid again. And now I doubt that they're actually going to find anyone because RTZ is just farming very safely in his own jungle and on the top lane. They're going to try and make their way all the way top, but there's a lot of running around and secret are farming. Yeah. But you do have the critical items for C9. So Battle Fury NV with Empower buff up. The Blink Dagger has arrived on Bone 7, 20 minutes in. I don't in. think they can kill this at all. Like, he has 1500 HP and a full magic stick. Even with the Fiend script, they're just going to run down again. So even more just crossing the map and not doing that much. Meanwhile, Look at the stack again on the Ancients. Dire is constantly just getting more and more gold advantage with this. If Envy finds it though, like he might try no, and... There's, there's no way he can farm it, Toby, like he dies. True. <laughs> I mean, he wants to. He's, he, right, he's right next to it. Uh, he, he wants it. If it's, if it's just one Ancient, like, then he'll be like, yeah, sweet. Oh my god, uh, he actually well, gets it. He's given it, and he's going to try and he take the Centaur stomped. as well. The Stomp was uh, the down, the TP's on the way. Wow. And Envy, he's going to take it. Oh, he blinks and then TP's out. The Empower and the Battle Fury combined, it was enough. That was amazing steal. Fada though, that's not where he wanted to be. Oh. TP size coming in, the call is too late. He didn't get in range. Good thing Roshan changed his target there as uh, S4 was attacking the Venomancer. Mm -hmm. You gotta be careful about things like that. Sometimes you can just not attack, because it's the aggro pool. Uh, what? Did he just slam the melee creep on mid? Uh, actually not sure. Yeah, I... I, I yeah, ah, screw that Radiant melee creep. He, 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 he was with the mages, Toby. He was with them. Definitely didn't affect heroes of secret. <laughs> um, <laughs> they didn't take any substantial damage, no. Now, Zai, blink, misses the call. Yeah. It's good to have the blink and force that for this purpose. If you miss, you can still get out. And sometimes, even if you hit, you can pull the enemy out by forcing away. Yep. Middle tower Very strong push here. They don't care about the Venom Arts. They just keep going with the death Fada, field. Fada jumping in. He gets the ulti off. Turning on four. And then your RP with a pick up from Kuro. Oh dragging him back. Skewering him on top of the hill. This is why That's you have Kuro to be careful you. of the Rubik Kuro. Yeah, so terrifying. Beautiful reaction time there. Having the Blink Dagger, he makes it look easy. Envy's looking for the last hit in this top tower. He really wants it. And he'll take it as well. S4's yep. got the static link off, and Envy will just blink himself away. Oh, now he's gone him. out of here because Zai has made his way in and blink in one second time, but he'll have to weigh up the cold duration. They have enough into the trees, no way to follow. Envy will be getting himself away to safety. Yeah. Gonna be safe. And <clears throat> they don't get him, and he does get the tower, but still, C9 are really struggling here in this early game. This is looking very grim. He has the full Vladmirs now on Antimage at least. So we can farm more effectively and not lose HP all the time, because there has been a lot of running back to base for him. Not anymore. Satanic already? Uh-huh. All right, then. This, this guy's got almost 13,000 net worth. They're itemizing for high ground. Like, they want to take a high ground pressure on the Roshan. Whenever they get to take Roshan, they will just go high ground with it. Atizi's almost got 600 gold per minute. Yeah. 
Like the closest near him is actually Andy Mage. Uh, Eternal Envy's doing really good. And yep, that's what you're talking about. C9, they love they to do this kind of it. stuff. They're going to jump in and grab Rosham. This isn't the first time we've been at this party. C9 did this on day one. Yeah. And this is such a huge play as well because this is a this is an important component to Secret's push on the high ground. If they don't have the Aegis, they will have a much harder time breaking it. The only danger they have this time is they don't have the Pugna like they did last time. I mean, this is a funneling, play. funneling damage in. This is all around dangerous because they have no idea where everyone is. They don't have any vision yep. on the map. They're just blindly saying, hey, let's go Roche. Let's hope we can do it. And let's pray. Let's I, just pray. I believe in miracles. Yeah, they got it this well, so... So, Bone 7 TP's out, AM blinks, and then straight back to the farm. Not only do they get, like, the uh, the Aegis from it, it's also all the golden experience. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's plenty, especially to the starved supports over on Bane and Tuscar. Getting some progression for them as well, giving more gold, because they need it. With the wards and how it's looking right now, the map control coming from Secret, yep. it's just very difficult. They've taken one tower. And that's that's <laughs> all the gold that the supports are getting. The one tower, the Roshan. So they definitely needed this. Love how Fada stays in the trees. He's throwing out play quads, but it reveals his position every time he does it. Yeah. No. Uh, TZ will come down and mop up this bot lane. So he's going to be building into Butterfly. By the looks of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Puppy is the jungler. He has been jungling a lot already. What's he up to? He's still at level 10, however. Like. He's the lowest net worth on the map. Yeah. Well, he hasn't actually managed to pick up the uh, medallion as well, which is very sad for him. Oh, that's oh, nice. A misery. lot of them are going on S4 here. If the he can keep him from creeping. He, oh, MV, he only does a mana void, but he's actually backing up. Bane? You've got misery here, but he walks through the observer sentry ward while he's in, in the invis room. Oh, yeah. So they see him. He was actually smoked at first with the invis as well, but then as he walked closer, it broke and sort just backing out. Bottom lane, tower being pressured, no defense here right now. This is Secret just trying to force the rotations from Cloud9, but Cloud9 won't care as long as AM's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's that's the goal here. And actually, what itemization, what, what items should we, we should we be looking for? I find my tongue. Um, on the Animage, knowing Mega Style probably won't be... Okay, yes. Of course. Uh, Have you not paid attention, Toby, in class? In, in Envy's class? He's a classy kind of guy. Top lane, well, there's your call. They find Zai and Misery trying to get the Fiends grip on the Skurin back and the Mana Void to ensure the kill. A lot of money in for Envy and Misery almost denying himself. The Razor gets there in time. Yeah, he tried very close there to get to deny, but they got a kill and that's huge. Getting a big streak off the Axe into the Antimage pockets. Almost 600 gold for that. Yeah. And we do get the Yasha over on AM. Yeah, so, so he almost has the full Manta style. Uh, Koro. He steals Blink and the haste rune. <laughs> yep. Blink and haste. Kuro is going to have a good time. He's building towards the Aghanims. The dream, the wet dream of every Rubik player. When you have that maxed out uh, spell steal and the Aghanims, two second cooldown instead of 16. It is such a huge impact. Let him run. There's a, he might want to run away, however, as now Eternal Envy. Blinky Gover is like, where are my camps? <laughs> yeah, he did also see the uh, supports there. He spotted them out a little bit. Top lane, solo pressure here by Ateezy, really far out. No TP, what are you doing there, Ateezy? Hey, he's looking to fight, the Manly with a call down a Black Cannon, almost killing Misery, but no tail comes in, and it will actually be, well, the Nightmare. Oh, this Waiting out be... a little bit longer, the Sigil's down, so Ateezy running away, they're letting Envy have the kill. They want more money in him, and he's gonna take it. This is now the second fight where they've given Envy at least 500 to 600 gold just from finding the kill. And Secrets. he took the T1 tower on bottom lane before. Every team is struggling against this anti-mage, really. C9 are playing it so well, and they're working well around it. But that was a big misplay by RTZ to go that far out on a tier 2 tower when his team was being spotted on other parts of the map and not having a TP out. Yep. Uh, he, just had, he just had confidence. He was a confident boy, for sure. And now we've been getting... Okay, so the Manda style is done on any mage. So say goodbye to your mana very early on. An issue probably more for the Razor and the rest of his team than anything else, uh, mm -hmm. considering getting that mech off is such a priority for Secret during the fights. And then you've got a Blink Dagger on Tusk, so you've got a Blink into Walrus Punch. Yeah, the Blink on Tusk is going to work very well defensively against Axe, because you can Blink in and Snowball whoever got called. So you can save people. That is the huge part about it, though. They're chasing after the Anti-Mage, but he is going to play around them. Backing down. Well, they both got Observer Wards at the entrance yep. to the secret jungle. They do. 
And now the tier one tower in middle. The Gale, very premature there from Fada, so he doesn't actually RTZ directly. But Envy, just taking the tower, he can't finish the job. The Plague Ward might try and do this. Uh, no, it's going to get brought down. So Puppy will deny the tier one tower in mid. Yeah, that's a deny. Uh, Envy finds a Dita rune. That's going to speed up the farming even more as he's just running around with the Empower. To keep that in mind, it just makes him farm so quick. Two hits to farm in big camp. This DD Empower Battle Fury. And he could be looking to fight. He has the Aegis. He wants to fight right now. But they can see him yeah, too. Yeah, but he sees them. This is definitely a good time to fight if he has his teams with him. Oh, jump down. Burns up the mana and a four stuff up from Sai. And Nakura right behind him to the pickup. And then he blinks himself away. He doesn't want to be involved in this one. And the snowball, that's what you're talking about with the defense. The cooldown not doing enough work. Shallow Grave on Zai, keeping him alive a little bit longer while Arteezy pummeling into the Tusker. They want more. Eternal Levy blinks up. Oh, he's he not going to his feet, but no! He's in trouble. He's forced right behind him. No immortality. And Eternal Levy will drop for 68 seconds. Oh, boy. No buyback available as well. <sighs> he wouldn't why, use it why anyway. Why does it seem like it always happens to Envy and RTC? <laughs> the Aegis disappearing right before you die? It's just... It's just their kind of thing. Oh, that's so unfortunate for him. And now Radiant's the tower is definitely tower gonna fall. 50 seconds without animation. They're gonna go and try to force the high ground as there's no RP. Can they do this fast enough? The Plague Wars are starting the defense. They enfeeble on RTC. Take away as much damage. Even nightmaring S4. Koro looking for something nice to steal. Can't find it, however. For the Plague Wars, the Shards faded with the ulti, coding up only on two. So we only get S4 and Arteezy, but they're the two critical ones. Yeah, definitely. They're uh, important targets, but they're probably going to back off now. They didn't get to deal so much damage, but Axe is coming in here. Maybe they want to keep going. Oh, I think it's hard, though. Maybe. Kuro stole Sigil, so Cloud9 getting up. And Puppy baiting. He got killed, so might be chasing him, but nah. Nothing like that. Right. Retreat. I think Secret realized that if they're going to break the high ground of C9, they need that Aegis we were talking about earlier. And C9 are really, like, they're so uh, proactive in the sense that they take the Aegis away from the enemy there. Mm -hmm. Else they could have been facing a high ground push much sooner in this game. Such a long time as well before the Aegis could be coming up. Like, it's a minute and 10, 20 seconds. But that's, that's forever when you have an AM on the field. Yeah, that's the minimum time as well. So it could also be even longer. So AM, the safety farm, using illusions to clean up the creep wave, and uh, Poppy's having not, not a bar of it. But Evie did that, brought four heroes to the top, and then just runs up the mid lane. Exactly. So it's always about the split push game. He does have a TP with him as well, so he can pressure pretty far mid and then just rotate. Or what he's doing right now, go and check the stack. Of course, Helmo Dominator's gone on Gyrocopter, so he is not stacking it anymore. No one's defending top the top lane. Is under attack. Yeah. This, this is like a huge flag but right now to Seeker. There's something is up with Cloud9. Exactly. So they're all playing pretty safe, close to their own base. The S4 really farming a little bit. And uh, full BKB completed on Razor right now. That is going to be pretty nice for him, but there is a lot of BKB piercing things going on on C9. There are. That's what we were talking about early on. It's. The control is still always going to be there for, for Cloud9. The issue is just going to be positioning coming into the fight. Unless Zai can complete what he's doing, yeah. which is that Scythe of Vice. Exactly. Speaking of control, getting the Scythe of Vice on Axe is amazing. Also gives him a very good mana pool. Bottom lane. Actually going. He's jumping in to go for the Gale, but missing on Razor. But shows his positioning and Zai just runs himself over. And he gets the battle hunger over on Fada, but Fada's gonna haste through. So snake. he's just running away, but he cannot he cannot blink himself away. The we will reveal the positioning, but Zai, blink taker for him was still on cooldown. They get nothing for this. And enemy is like push top, let's just charge. Envy takes everything from you. Yep. I mean, this is what you do. You, if you create space Radiant's on bottom there, that's probably the attack. only reason that Venomancer and Magnus tried to go aggressive there, is to force a reaction so that Envy could push. I don't believe they were like, oh, we can kill the BKB Axe Mech Razor under his tower. tower that was not fallen. the thought process at all. It's just trying to create this. Yep. Exactly Get Secret this. to move exactly where Cloud9 want them to be. 
And secret, they can't let this happen or continue to happen because right now, Eternal Envy is playing like evil version of Robin Hood. He's robbing from the rich and the poor and keeping it all for himself. Coming after Zai, he got the call, dragging Envy deep inside the base, but now the Mana Style will trigger. And he's actually attacking the tier 3 tower, but more support is S4 inside the smoke, breaking, but Fader blinks away in time. Dyer's There's still misery behind him, and attack. this is one hell Envy of a... Envy is still hitting the tower, they're chasing a snake, but they're not this stopping it. Like, okay, yeah, you're gonna kill Fada. 343 gold. But you just took the tier 3 tower and opened up your top racks. Yeah. That's, uh, again, a beautiful play by C9. I like how they put their bodies around there and just protect Envy. So they have people behind, so he cannot be looped around on. Just very nicely played here by C9. They're absolutely out playing Secret, but they were in a worse spot. But now, look at the gold on AM. It's, it's the split push game. Yeah. And they it just said, like, they're making secret go everywhere else they don't want to be. Arteezy coming up with the shards. <laughs> he has not allowed entry up to the Ancients. Nowhere near the farming yards of uh, Eternal Envy. Yeah. Didn't have the right the right code. Big Natty stops him at the door. <laughs> Someone changed the code on the bomb. Yeah. God. It would be nice to always have a code on your Ancients protecting them. Though Poppy is just standing and watching uh, Roshan like, it's, where the hell are you, man? It's almost the max spawn time. It is. Like, it's, it's 10 seconds after three attack. minutes. Exactly. Very close. And Envy, in the meantime, making the most out of that one. He realizes that they might probably get Roshan soon, but we should not try and contest it. So C9's game plan is just to keep playing around. Sure, Secret will get the Aegis. That's their mentality. But then they want to just defend around that. Couriers be spawning Couriers. I mean, they always have two Couriers. It seems they have the highest Couriers per game, I'm sure. If there's a stat for that, sure, C9 is There's winning. a lot more teams doing that than this competition, not just Cloud9. It's it's becoming more and more frequent. It's kind of 35 minutes that you need more couriers because there's so much money coming in in such a short space of time. Yeah, I mean, it's a good problem to have, though, but it's even better to not make it a problem. Just make it so that your couriers are always delivering. Roshan's up. Gyrocopter moving as quick as he can by actually triggering his butterfly to get oh, there, too. They want to contest this Roshan now. Of course they do. They've got so much. Like, again, you, you blink in, Gale, RP, you got almost everything you want. Where is this weave as well from Puppy? Eyes on Rubik. He's got to use it to actually scout at the moment. And yeah, Kuro on the other side of the tree line. They're jumping in four stuff up from Zai. He can bleed back down again into a two-man call. And Roshan's not dead yet. There's your RP from both of them for the pickup. Rubik and he stole RP! Kuro locking inside the pit. They still need more damage to win this fight. And here comes oh, this four. There's the damage. They got him up on top of the hillside. They're TPing back to base team secret. The Cloud9, it is all done by Kuro. You said watch him and the birdie popped Vader on the run out of here but he is down as well for the count Tuscar the only sole survivor from that massacre you cannot take away what a monster Kuro is on this hero just insane perfect positioning and the patience the patience so we he knows it's gonna come he waits for it lifts him before he can even skewer them anywhere just beautiful he like, is he is the K-God he is the K-God Definitely. That's an Aegis and a one team fight going the way of Secret. Now with the Butterfly, Satanic, Aegis, they might be able to actually force high ground. And there's a long death time on the AM, so no split push. They draw the line. Top is the lane they want to push. So critical. I, I can't believe... That's, that's the second time Kuro has done this in the game, though. Like, you jump in with the Magnus, and he picks him up straight away. Yeah. Every single time, like, he's definitely in the right position and he has the reaction time to do There's so. His and that has to hurt for Magnus. And he knows the fact that if he went for BKB instead of the Shadow Blade, he would be able to not get lifted, but he would probably not be able to stop the RP steal. Here it comes. Yeah. Koro, Koro has now enabled himself with the Aghanim Scepter. He is rewarded for his, his good deeds, and he will also keep this. Because he didn't die, he still has the RP for the next team fight. So he can lead with the RP and steal another spell afterwards. It's crazy. Yeah. And if he steals another spell afterwards, oh god, there are so many good ones to pick from. It's still only a, only a level 2 ulti though, so it's not going to last as long as he would like. But it's still a 240 second duration. You know what's funny if he actually steals the Fiend script? He's going to have the Axe version of it putting Nightmare on people. <laughs> I suppose that works even though he doesn't have Nightmare. I suppose he just yep. puts a level 1 Nightmare or Max It, level. it should work. Uh, 
Because it's not based on your current level of Nightmare, I believe. Some skills in Dragon. Anyway, high ground pressure by Arteezy. They're going to enfeeble him up. no damage. Yeah, he's, he's down to about 100 on a pop. And getting Gout up, he's got Satanic as it's well as having the Aegis of the Immortal. So they're using him as a sponge against Cloud9. While S4 with the Aghanim Scepter ulti being through the town. Fortification will slow this one down. And Arteezy just wants to back up the heal. Meanwhile, in middle lane, Eternal Envy is pushing the tier 2 tower and trying to find the split push. Remember, if he can get the creep wave in through one of the other lanes, he can take that top rack. We have to keep this in mind. Yeah, definitely. You just need to get the creeps within, I believe it's 1400 range of the tier 3 tower or so. That's roughly the backdoor protection. So if any creeps reach that, they're going to be... Uh, there's going to be no backdoor protection. MV uh, also has the money. In fact, he's purchased up the recipe, but he hasn't sent it out to the, uh, to the secret shop just yet. He's short of buyback by 66 gold. Yep. So he could buy the full heart. So we're not looking at Zomiga crazy. Uh, I think he's got the heart. With, like, it's, it's definitely going to be high. You got, you got yeah. the recipe, so it's a heart. No, I mean, that um, he's not going to save for buyback, but he might do that. We'll oh, see okay. what he opts to do here. Yeah, but if it's like, like, do you still think about getting a BKB in this game, or is it, you know what? No. Get your butterfly. This There's is no not... Monkey King bar over on the Gyrocopter just yet. This is not a BKB game for either team. I think he just needs, like, Butterfly for damage or MKB so they can kill the Gyrocopter in team fights. Ah, that true. could be important as well. Yep. Uh, but I do not believe that going... Okay, BKB his, his Butterfly much. is a little bit le less on the priority list now. The fact that you've got a full butter, uh, a full Monkey King bar over I'll, on the Gyro. A little bit, but it's still an amazing item for your illusions. It gives so much DPS to your hero as well. Besides, fluttering, you know, and en we loves to flutter. So I think he's going to go for it. <laughs> Maybe oh. not maybe not straight away, but maybe hard into uh, MKB into Butterfly, something like that. Could work. So, okay, what's, what's Fada meant to achieve now? Like, is it all for the glory of the anti-mage? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, is that what this is down to? And turning Fada into, I'll, I ulti, and that's all? That's what I give to my that's, to my team fight? That's what the Blink Ag Snake is all about. He jumps in, ultis, and hopes to put Solar Crest on someone who shouldn't die, and then, then uh, hope, you know, hope that your team is winning. <laughs> Can't do much more that's, than that. That's a lot to hope for. Yeah. Well, he also has the Venom Here comes awards. the heart. Zai. The trap is prepared, but Envy's quite happy to take it because there's a lot of support behind him. S4's going to jump in. They get the Hex on him, and then the Snowball protection. S4 still with the Sonic Link, however. Envy has to blink himself away, and they'll split the fight up. Yeah, they're disengaging, just saying, okay, you can have no tail, and we're going to get out. Fada trying to run away, but it's a little bit tough because they're so fast. No <laughs> tail is actually surviving through this because Zai didn't have the mana. Uh, to just culling blame. So it took so long to find these kills. Yeah, that's very fine though. They saved the anti-mage and they only lost the Tuscar. Yep, and anti-mage goes back to farming. The farming continues. As, as long as anti-mage can farm, I think Cloud9 will be like, you know what? Oh, it's successful. Nice. There is a double damage rune on bottom lane and C9 are going to be the first ones to scout it. And he's coming for the tower. Can he take? Can he even stop him? Like with mana styles, Zai will jump in and anyway, it's very quick. I think he can just out. blink back in if he wants to, actually. But it's a little bit cocky to do so afterwards. It's dangerous. Yeah. There's I, no need. I don't think Envy really wants to enter the danger zone again. Dude, he lives. He lives there. Oh, so there's your DD rune you're talking about. They should look Meanwhile, for Meanwhile, Koro looking for a kill over on Misery. Gets the pick up, throwing him back, triggers the sigil. And what else has he really got to steal? Like Fader? He can steal the Gale now. Um, okay, not close enough. Oh, for he's got to kill Puppy. He's going on Puppy straight away. Almost got him with the. He needs more damage. He's. Oh, he's not going in. No. Nope. The axe was right behind him. Yeah. The rune of it destiny, would, though. It would screw up his uh, jungle progression <laughs> to get a kill. Definitely. And for a dazzle. Eh. Yeah, it's more the fact that he saw three people top and knew there was only the Axe and Dazzle. They can't really do much. They can stop him from killing the Dazzle, maybe, but then the Axe would risk dying himself. Axe, we haven't really mentioned it that much, but he is a very good counter as well to the enemy. With the Call and the Hex, he has a lot to stop him with. Father's preparing the Plague Ward defense. The shockwave to try and keep RTZ and S4 out. There's still no ranks dropping. And remember, while all this is going on, again, Envy pushing that tier 2 tower in the bottom lane. But where is the opening? Kuro is trying to find one. The homing missile comes in. They do yes, take out the tower. Now. And now, well, where is it? You jump in with the Gale. It hits all the secret. Magnetite almost instantly the second that started. And Zai looking for another target. He can't find it just yet. Envy's on the front lines, sending his illusions in. They keep the racks up. And now oh, you're on on the grabbing Kuro, pulling him back. That's a value RP. But Koro, he's still shockwave, still alive because the Shadow Grave and Envy down for the count. 90 seconds, he has to 
buy back to defend this mid rax but at the same time, the mid rax is gone already. Yeah, this is looking really grim. I don't think they can stop this. They're too sustainable. The Dazzle heal keeping this hero high HP. Like, Razor and Jar are too strong. They just take it all. They really just take it all. Bone 7, another jump in goes in, Viz, but would you believe it? There's a gem on Pompey, so he just dies after blinking in. The buyback will be from Venomance, but Envy with his death, that's going to be it. GG, well played. It'll be 30 to 10 in favor of Team Secret taking it out here in the first game of this series. Yep, that's where it's going to end to. And even though C9 played very well, and I, I was saying it as well, they were out playing Secret for a very long time in this game. Secret, we're getting closer to that terminal farm as well where they just had too strong of a gyrocopter, too strong of a razor, and the sustainability from Dazzle behind them. So it was too hard in the end for C9 to hold high ground.